course, how did I not see it sooner? Three comes after two. Except when CD comes after two, but uh, we're not gonna talk about that. Sonic the Hedgehog 3. It's the third one. It's also only about half a game that Sonic Team would end up completing later in one of the most creative ways I've actually ever encountered. That being, of course, slapping these two carts together into this crime against nature. You think God stays in heaven because he lives in fear of what he's created? These days, companies still don't finish their games on time and then just push a huge day one update on you. And if you don't install that, you're either incredibly brave or you actually liked Cyberpunk 2077. Now, some people might not like what I have to say next. Uh, don't worry, it's not some crazy opinion or anything. I wouldn't be caught dead sharing one of those on the internet. No, uh, basically, this is not going to be a Sonic 3 and Knuckles video. This is just going to be a video about the first half of Sonic 3, because it would kind of be double the length that this video already is. And, uh, I was kind of having a mental breakdown thinking about covering all of this game at once, so instead, I'm gonna do it this way, so you actually get a video. And then I'll make a lock-on joke later on or something when the second video comes out. It'll be funny. One last thing I'd like to bring your attention to before we get started, and that is the Sonic 3 beta. We recently saw a beta of Sonic 3 get discovered, and there were some interesting details in there, such as the PC port soundtrack confirmed to be the original soundtrack for the game before all of the uh, music controversy set in. And of course, we also saw the birth of the Drop Dash. We did not see its way into a Sonic game for real until 23 years later in Sonic Mania. Either that, or it's one crazy coincidence that these two things look very similar to each other. And, uh, I mean, you know, I used it as a joke a second ago, but you could also subscribe and click the bell if you want to, because, like, I, I make videos once a week and sometimes YouTube doesn't tell you about them, so it'd be cool if, like, you know, you could see them. Also in the beta, there is an alternate intro sequence for the game showing that Sonic might not have actually collected all of the emeralds back in Sonic 2, meaning that the canon ending of the game would have been different, because of course, in the actual Sonic 3, our boy do be looking pretty blonde. Unfortunately for Sonic though, newcomer Knuckles the Echidna mistakes him for Sonichu and punches the blonde right out of this boy. Knuckles then runs off with Sonic's rock collection, but not before doing the one thing he swore he would never do. Unlike Sonic, I don't chuckle. You make me sick. With questions on their minds and frustration on their faces, the two heroes set off into the forest of Angel Island Zone for a brand new adventure. Now, of course, this is where I would say, here's our Green Hill Zone ripoff of the game, but to be honest, Angel Island Zone is actually pretty different from Palm Tree Panic, Emerald Hill, and Green Hill. See, this one actually has its own gimmicks, whereas the others are just kind of like chillin'. Like, you got timed platforms to jump on, you got zip lines all over the place, you really feel like you're delving really deep into the forest. You have the charred remains of a once beautiful land destroyed by the schemes of a madman. Wait a minute, that's not a gimmick, that's just, uh, really bad. But yeah, that's a pretty dynamic change, I would say. It's definitely the craziest thing I've seen in any of these games so far, and, uh, I mean, on the bright side, at least with all the trees gone, now we can find those special rigs a little bit easier. These portals take you away to a mystical land filled up with blue spheres, red spheres, star spheres, Britney spheres. Even the land beneath your feet is a gigantic sphere, which technically is not too much different than normal, but Sonic could be a flat earther. This could be a totally new experience for him. You know the drill by now. Blue good, red bad, collect them all, claim your rock. That's pretty much it. I'm also kind of finding myself wondering, though, how Knuckles dropped all of these back into the special zone so quickly after stealing them from Sonic. But then another part of my brain is like, why are you so concerned about realism in a game where animals wear shoes? Just like Sonic 2, collect seven emeralds and bam, Super Sonic is back. You earned it. I'm proud of you. That is not a joke, I am proud of you. You're trying your best, and that's what matters. As the two make their way into the deepest part of the forest, they come across Eggman and his Flamecraft, which Tails mercilessly destroys because he is clearly still upset over the missiles that were dropped on them mere moments ago. I mean, honestly, I would be too. Missiles? Kinda cringe. The duo then runs into Knuckles for the second time, and the nerve of this guy? He tells them that they smell bad, and then he sends them to the bath dimension. Hydro City Zone, not debating the name pronunciation with you, is basically a less dangerous chemical plant zone. 
See, I never really felt like I was going to drown or anything in this level. It's pretty easy to actually get yourself out of the water once you're in it. I mean, there are levers all over the place that'll do just that. But, uh, you know, it is a water level, so therefore, I hate it. But I don't actually, it's okay. I mean, even if you don't like it, it kind of goes by in the blink of an eye anyway, and at the end of the stage, you see Eggman with his newest contraption, which I believe was tailor-made for the purpose of being destroyed by Sonic, because I really don't see any other practical purpose for this machine. Sonic and Tails then find themselves in Marble Garden Zone, not to be confused, of course, with Marble Zone, which is another marble-based location on an entirely separate island. And you know what, for once, I'm actually gonna let Marble Zone win this, because I do not like Marble Garden Zone very much at all. I think comparatively, somehow, you actually are moving at a better pace in Marble Zone than you do in Marble Garden, because they keep stopping you to fight these giant face enemies, or like, you gotta use the spinners to like, float up in the air, and they're super sluggish when you're moving around, but then as soon as you hit the ground, you're like, BAM! Ludicrous speed! speed. Eggman also thought he was clever by making these badniks that look like spikes, but they're actually springs? This place is a madhouse! Eventually Eggman tries to cave in the entire area on top of Sonic and Tails, but you know, they're too fast for that. So Tails ends up helping Sonic take to the skies in a boss fight that is a lot shorter if you just get a ton of hits on Eggman before he leaves the ground. The forced trip to the carnival is in the cards for our heroes next, and unfortunately for them, they are getting a scathing review from us on Yelp. Because let's look at the facts here, while I was in this place, uh, a dumb idiot rat got into the fuse box and turned off all the power and I stubbed my toe and also I almost drowned in the gift shop. Which would at least be like thematically appropriate if I was at SeaWorld, but like, come on guys, that's just silly. This stage is kind of a mixed bag for me. I mean, overall I love the goofy music and of course the aesthetic is basically like a casino stage except my wallet feels safer. But I really don't like how they separate the entire thing into like, like chambers of obstacles to surpass. Like that's kind of what it feels like to me. It sort of just slows things down a little bit. Not really my cup of tea, but I will give them points for the amazing amount of gimmicks in the stage, such as platforms that uh, rise when you jump off of them. I don't understand it, but it's there. Uh, you got balloons, cannons that fire you in every which way, little places to gain a ton of speed, shoot Sonic into the stratosphere, it'll be funny. And of course, the dreaded barrels. You just press up and down on them and they're really not a big issue. I can see how it might have been an issue back in the past when, you know, you couldn't Google anything or read the instruction manual. I'm not going to give it any more attention than that because it's really not worth the energy. Next up, of course, we have an ice level, which means we are in extreme danger of me making ice puns throughout this entire section. I should really be careful about that because you guys might start giving me the cold shoulder. I would say this is definitely one of the most famous ice levels in the entire franchise, probably the most well-liked as well. It was so well-liked, in fact, that uh, Sonic Team went and stole the name for a level in Sonic Adventure that has almost no similarities with the original. After Sonic practices for the Winter Olympic Games about 15 years too soon, he ends up being thrown into a bunch of caves with emphasis on vertical platforming and, of course, some puzzles here and there. Uh, they're sort of reminiscent of Labyrinth Zone's puzzles back from Sonic 1, except when I play this game, it doesn't make me want to shut off the console. After escaping the caves with his life, Sonic ends up finding Eggman's newest robot that has a handy-dandy platform uh, that he can use to dispose of him, and it just makes me think that Eggman doesn't actually want to win anymore. Or, he's trying to lure us into a false sense of security. Because next up, we've got Launch Base Zone, which actually has a pretty cool boss fight in it. Unfortunately, the game ends off on a bit of a confusing note for me because I don't really like this zone. Like, the layout is kind of gross. It just kind of, like, goes all over the place. There's no consistency, really, and it, it just doesn't flow very well, in my opinion. And then, of course, this is yet another water stage in this game. You know what? I'm gonna say it. 7.8 out of 10. Too much water. After dispatching one of the weakest bosses I've ever seen in a video game, Sonic does his best GTA impression and steals Eggman's ride, knocks over a civilian that totally didn't have it coming to him, Oh no! and lands on a platform attached to a rocket. The perfect place for a slightly more challenging boss. Honestly, this one is kind of challenging with the spinning spike ball above it. It's kind of like, oh, it's a little hard to hit the cockpit, and then like it has a bunch of sections, but it's cool. I like it. I can vibe with that. But take care of that thing, and it's smooth sailing from here on out. You have gathered the seven Chaos Emeralds. Say your wish. 
I want to hear some bitchin' final boss music. Your wish has been granted. And I wish that he had to replay both bosses before this and watch a cutscene every time he loses a life. Wait, what? That's just about the only problem I really have with Big Arm as a boss. But overall, I think it's a really fun and iconic boss fight, even though it's not the most difficult thing in the world. The boss would reappear later down the line in Sonic Generations 3DS, and it would even come complete with its own remix, which is, uh, even better than the original. Or just look up one of those mashups, I bet it sounds really good put together. But, you know, Dimps, thank you for doing that. I, I really appreciate you bringing back the, the big arm boy. And that's it! Game over! Please purchase Sonic 3 and Knuckles to continue your adventure. Oh, what's that? It's not out because it's 1994? Oh man, well, flash forward to right now because it's a coincidence the video for it isn't out either. Unless it is, of course, because time might have passed since this was uploaded. That's pretty cool for you, huh? You see, because, like, this is a recording, right? So I'm permanently trapped in this moment in time right now where that video doesn't exist, so I'll never see it. Like, technically, I'm not even real. Outro. If you like the video and you haven't already, please make sure you subscribe, click the bell, follow my Twitter, and join the Discord to keep up with more Sonic things and other things that aren't Sonic things, because I do a lot of things. Uh, if you made it to the end of this video, please let me know down in the comments. I'd like to see who made it to the end. It's like you're in a secret club that all those other people that didn't make it here aren't in. So, that's pretty cool. And I'd also like to give a huge thank you to my current supporters, who are... The Ghost, Roblox Gamer, Kaido the Samurai, Danny Lee Dauber, Mike TGC, Chaotic Mercenary, T-Bone APH, Royal Blueburn, The Seven Superstars, Crystal, Tyvel Tech Guy, Raiden Still Plays, PM13, Crazy Sean DX, Chaos, Jeremy, Dork in a Hat, Mega Traffic Cone, and on Patreon, Anthony Hanekak and Mailman019. Anthony, if I mispronounce that, please let me know. I apologize. <laughs> But thank you all so much for supporting, it really means a lot, and if you want to become a supporter yourself, you can go ahead and click up there for Patreon or down below the video for the join button. You get the same benefits, such as being able to see blooper videos for most of my uploads. And let me tell you, this video had a lot of moments that probably aren't going to make it into the video, so you might want to see that. There's also, I think, like 23 other videos there right now that you can check out, even if you're only a $1 patron, because even $1 helps and it is really appreciated. So thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you guys next time.